The first studies of a new planet, which we of the galaxy contemplate colonizing, are almost always studies of the atmosphere and of the temperature. Most are poisonous atmospheres, either steaming hot or impossibly cold, depending upon the planet's relative position to the sun. In the past 500 years, our scientists have conquered the atmospheres and the cold of the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, by constructing tremendous atmosphere converters and heating units that have permitted Earth people to colonize these rich worlds. One of the principal scouting assignments of the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation is to check constantly the atmosphere and temperature as well as to test certain secret equipment in the units which only GBI personnel are authorized to know. Well, that finishes my test for Pluto. There's some traces of methane getting back into the oxygen. Dangerous amount? Not yet, but it could become dangerous. We'd better order a converter repair team to check up on the secret GBI equipment. It's time for the check-in with Commander Richard Dantella. Right. Gordon in Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Gordon in Skyflash 2 calling GBI. Let me talk to Commander Richard. Answer. Answer, Commander Richard. <laughs> Just a few inches more, Dr. Zarkov. A few inches or a million miles. As long as I will it, you cannot move. That's funny. There's no answer in Richard's office. Well, it's not possible. There's always someone there 24 hours a day. Yeah, what's wrong? Gentlemen, I am Zydervine. The Mad Witch of Neptune. Yes, the Mad Witch of Neptune. That is what they called me before I was banished. How did you get in here? Into my office? Into the GBR? <laughs> As you said, Commander, I am a witch. Witches can go any place. Through walls, millions of miles through space. Oh, Give me Dr. Zarkov. Try Commander Richard's office again. Either you are an apparition projected into our minds and are not present in substance at all, or... Or, Dr. Zarkov, how else would I enter into the inner sanctum of TBI without opening even a door? One moment. I'm not here. Next moment, I am. Oh, no, you don't. Commander, what do you think the call? Mm -hmm. How does your scientific mind explain this? An apparition, as I said. Boy, you have discovered the secret of that duplication and projection. A secret known only to authorized DPI personnel? Like the secret of the units that control the atmosphere converters on Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto? What about them? What do you know about the secret units? The keys, gentlemen, the keys. The keys? What are you talking about? If my information is correct, each of you carries a very interesting little key. Together, put to proper use, these keys will cause the explosion of the remote control destruction unit of the atmosphere converter. Very interesting indeed. Destruction unit. You must be out of your mind. Why would we install a, a destruction unit in a machine designed to manufacture a life-giving atmosphere? There's a constant threat to each planet's government in case any one of them should go to war against the neighboring planet. You can destroy the aggressor's civilization by the turn of your two keys. Even if this were so, what does it have to do with you? You did remember I was banished from Neptune. 
Do you also remember I swore I would have my revenge? I don't get it. Ten minutes and GBI communication still hasn't called us back. They haven't located Commander Richards or Dr. Zarko. I have a feeling something's happened. Inside of GBI headquarters? Come on, Dale. If there's one place in the entire galaxy that's safe, it's GBI headquarters. I know, but it's also a fact that Commander Richards' office is the nerve center of the galaxy. If he isn't there, someone must be. Someone must be there 24 hours a day. I mean that every living thing on Neptune shall die. If, if such a destruction unit existed, I'll bet, I'll just bet you'd carry out that threat. Fortunately for Neptune, there is no such unit. And we, of course, we have no keys. <laughs> my hand, my hand is being forced into my pocket. Your hands, Commander Richards and Dr. Zarko, to hold the keys to my revenge on Neptune. Just give me a chance to, to intercede for you. I'll, I'll get you a full part. Neptune will allow you to return. Allow me to return. I shall return, all right. But only the ghosts of those who thank me will be left to grief. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Come in. What's the score on Commander Richards and Dr. Zarko? Look, that's impossible. Someone's got to be in Richards' office. Wait a minute. Yes, sir. We'll be coming in for a landing on Neptune in ten minutes. Contact us at GBI headquarters there. Okay, so it looks strange. But I tell you, nothing could have happened to them inside of GBI headquarters. I hope you're right. We're entering Neptune's landing channel. Okay, cut the landing speed. Right. Nothing, no one can resist my will. Neptunians, in a few seconds, every one of you will breathe a poisonous methane gas. And you will know that I, I dream, have had my revenge. Put in the keys. I command you. Oh. No. No. GBI Earth. Come in, GBI Earth. Calling GBI Earth. Come in, GBI Earth. Have you been able to contact GBI Earth? I can't, Gordon. I can't make contact. The explosion must have knocked down all the communication lines. Our teleradio transmitters are about a half a mile away from the converters. They must have been blown up, too. You know what this means? Yeah, for some reason, Stykoff and Commander Richards detonated the control bomb. But their only authority to do that can come from the Galactic Council. And then, only if Neptune has attacked another planet. But I don't understand. Five minutes ago, we were talking to GBI, and not a word was said about trouble with Neptune. What are we going to do? Have you been able to contact them yet? No, we're absolutely cut off from all other planets. 
to tell the people not to get panicky and to stay in their homes. In the meantime, alert the military and the police to watch out for all attempts to escape from this planet. It's going to be difficult, Flash. Everybody will be trying to get away. Well, all the space flights will be watched by the military and the police. No one should be able to, unless we all can. Right. We've got to get back to Skyflash and contact GBI. We've got to find out what's going on. But there's only enough oxygen on Neptune to last the population for about 48 hours. There are enough spaceships in the entire galaxy to evacuate a planet in that time. Well, come on, we've got a lot of work to do. Alert. Alert all military and police posts on Neptune. Alert. All military and police posts on Neptune. Alert. All spaceships are to be grounded. Allow no one to leave Neptune. No one is to leave Neptune. Arrest anyone trying to escape. Repeat. Arrest anyone trying to escape. Zyderine, using a strange sort of electromagic, forces Commander Richards and Dr. Zarkov to detonate the methane to oxygen converter on Neptune. The powerful atomic bomb, detonated by remote control from Earth, completely destroys the converter and the pumping system. Panic spreads like wildfire throughout the Neptunian populace. Coincidentally, Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Flash Gordon and Sky Flash 2 calling GBI. Emergency. This is an emergency. Come in. Now listen, listen carefully. We've landed on Neptune. Right after we set down, the methane to oxygen converters were blown up. Wait. Have any reports of Neptune attacking another planet been reported to GBI? That's all I wanted to know. For the next 48 hours, Dale Art and I will stay here on Neptune and try to get the secret GBI auxiliary converter hooked into Central System. I'll talk to Mr. Richard as soon as we lock him. You'll probably find him and Dr. Zarkoff in converter detonation vault 3. You have served me well, gentlemen. You'll pay for this, Zyderine. I swear by all I hold sacred, you'll pay for this. Millions of lives for a penny revenge. Yes. It is not I who will pay for those millions of lives, gentlemen, but you. Yes, you. But, sir, you don't think to pay. Why, why would they do it? It's not to be someone else. 
Only they have the keys that close the detonation circuit. In a few seconds, I will vanish as I appear. But your mind will not remember that I was ever here. I am leaving you now. Forget. 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 We're in the converted demolition vault. How? How did we get here? It would seem that all went as planned. In the last detail, Prostar, exactly as we planned it together all these years of exile. See them. Can you see them? Those miserable people of Neptune. Revenge is beautiful, Zydarine, when the wound is as deep as ours. Let us see what is happening on Neptune. And these are the facts, as straight as I can give them to you, people of Neptune. We have about 40 hours... Chief security, security scout of the GBI, Flash Gordon. But every available engineer and workman here on Neptune will be diverting the pipelines to the auxiliary converter and placement. With your help, we can do it. Stay in your home. Don't exert yourself. Save your strength and your breath. Breathing in the last few hours will become difficult, but do not become panicky. Together we can do it. And remember, do not try to escape from Neptune. Even if every available spaceship in the galaxy were here, not one hundredth part of the population could be taken out. If one of us dies, all of us will. If one lives, we'll all live. And now let's go to work. Why didn't you tell me there was auxiliary equipment on Neptune? I didn't know it. It's the first I've heard of it. It was her job to know. I'm sending you to Neptune. Find the auxiliary equipment and destroy it before it can be used. Council placed it over 200 years ago in his secret vault. How wise they were. How lucky for us. Oh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, getting it in working order before the pipelines reach here. While I was telecasting to the people of Neptune, did you check in the pumping system? Yes. Stoner, the chief engineer, says he has about oh, enough standby pumps to take care of about 60% of the oxygen line. 60%? 
Well, but don't worry. The people in the areas that are not being covered are being evacuated to covered areas. Okay, but we don't have much time. We'll start popping those speed lines into those entries over there before we know it. Flash, do you... Do you think we really can make it in time? We've got to. Save your breath, we'll need it. Get ready to turn the machine on. Here. I'm ready. 